Welcome to another episode of the Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to the party, pal. You're my boy, bro. Yo, it. It. A podcast with interviews of amazing guests from the world of pop culture. Oh, yeah. TV. Nice. Movies. Oh, I love the movies. Comedy and more from deep inside the Man Cave. Your host, Elias. Valeria, welcome to the cave. Thank you so much for having me. How, I'm very excited to be here. How are you? What's new with you? Um, I'm doing good. Just here in quarantine, locked inside. Um, I mean, just been watching a lot of YouTube, to be honest, and TV and doing school and whatnot. Yeah. How's, how's the quarantine for you been? <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's not going bad. You know, I'm working from home and I, you know, taking care of my yeah. you know, wife and kids and, you know, doing the podcast. So can't complain. Of course. Yeah, so, uh, no, life goes on. That's right. That's right. So you've um you've been busy for a few years now. TV shows and uh, singing and, and commercials, and we'll talk about that. You usually start on Fox's Deputy as well. But uh, really quick, tell the yeah. listeners where you're originally from. I'm originally from San Antonio, Texas. Oh, how was I it? I got my start here. Yeah. How was it growing up there? Yeah. I love it here. To be honest, this is just home for me. Um, I mean, it was a little bit more challenging on the industry side because there's not as much to do here, of course, as there is in L.A. or New York or any of those big cities. But it was definitely, I mean, really interesting getting to start here and make my way up. And, you know, starting in Texas means going to Dallas and going to Austin. So it, it was definitely very fun having to do that. And, yeah, I mean, I I love San Antonio. This is, as I said, this is my home. Yeah. So, like, how did you know you wanted to get into the entertainment industry? Um, well, I always wanted to be an actor. Like, ever since I was little, I was very um, imaginative and just always loved watching movies and really enjoyed the character analysis and all of that stuff. And then I got into theater, and I really enjoyed theater, and I, like, swore to my life that I was going to be on Broadway or do something like that. But I hadn't tried film yet, and so eventually I – actually, singing brought me into film because I did a show called La Voz Kids USA, which was a singing competition show on Telemundo, and I made it to the finals on that. And so I came back to San Antonio, and these local producers from out here asked me if I wanted to – they were very kind. They asked me if I wanted to be in their movie, and so I was like, yeah, why not? You know, let's try that. And that's when I just realized that I, I wanted to do that for the rest of my life. I just loved being in front of the camera. Um, I, not really so much that, but just more of, um, I really loved playing a character. I thought that was really, really interesting and just telling a story, of course. So I think that was the moment, but mm. definitely had a lot of little moments when I was younger of like, oh, seeing a movie and being like, I want to do that, you know? <laughs> how old How old were you when uh, you did the singing competition? I think I was, well, I did it twice. The first time that I went, I auditioned here in san antonio and i did i got in and so i flew to miami that was season one and i was eight oh, but wow. i had no stage experience and i like started i like broke down on stage i started crying because i was really nervous and so i came back to san antonio and i was all heartbroken my mom was like no we're gonna get you so much experience and you're gonna get over your stage fright because i was very very shy growing up yeah and so that's exactly what i did and then i went back Oh my goodness, I think I was 11 or 12 because it was now season four. And uh, that's when I made it to the final. So I think I think 12. Wow. So when you decided you, you knew that you wanted to get, get into acting, did you start taking uh, acting lessons? I did, yes. But the thing is, the acting lessons that I took were in Dallas because okay. we don't really have anything here in San Antonio. So I would have to make the sacrifice of like, and my parents, of course, are so supportive. And I could have not done anything without them because they were driving me to Dallas like every week to, to take classes over there. How would, so how would you describe like your experiences taking acting classes? Oh, amazing. I honestly, moving to L.A., the hardest thing for me was not having my acting studio out there, even though L.A. has amazing acting classes. Yeah. And I did uh, move out there for two years when I was 14 to, you know, experiment over there and try to see if the acting classes were as good as they were in Dallas, because in Dallas there's a studio called, um, shout out to Catherine Sullivan's acting studio for film, because they're just amazing. And I really do, like, every time I go to L.A., that's 
I do miss Dallas because I think they have the most amazing acting acting uh, studio. Mm-hmm. But I mean, as far as how was the experience taking classes, I just loved it. I really just had such a good time every time I went there. Do you have a favorite moment, like while you were taking your acting classes, that still sticks out to this day? <laughs> um, I'd have to think about that. Let's see. I mean, I have a lot of good moments, but it's also. She always, ta- our teacher, Miss Kathy, she always challenges us a lot. And so I just remember, like, always being really anxious and, like, always wanting to get everything, like, super perfectly. Yeah. Um, but, okay, well, the last time I went, which was, I think, because of deputy, I haven't been able to go back in, I think, like, a year, or so, a year or so. But the last time that I went, I, she challenges, she challenges, oh, my gosh, she challenged us to do um, impressions. And I had to, like, I did an Emma Watson, imp- no, yeah, Hermione impression. I did a Shakira impression, which, by the way, were terrible. But I just remember, like, <laughs> she made us dress up and everything. I put on, like, a wig and everything. Oh, my goodness. But that was really, really fun. That was definitely a moment that is stuck in my head now. Do you think your life has changed since you started acting and singing and being in the entertainment industry? Yes, 100%. Oh, my goodness. I think... um the minute that I decided that I wanted to full on pursue this was definitely a moment where I had to decide, like, do I want to have a normal teenage life or do I really want to um, make all of the sacrifices that I've had to make to do what I do? Because, um, I mean, as far as how has my life changed, I've, I move around a lot. I, um, you know, when I first started, I would go to L.A. to audition over there. I would go to Dallas to take classes and then eventually, you know, I booked a booking little short films here and there i had to film one in tallahassee florida other ones in austin and so it was just moving around all the time and not seeing my family for long periods of time that's that's number one number two i mean i was always in public school as a little girl and i had to you know when i decided that i wanted to uh, do this and commit more of my time to do this i had to become homeschooled as well so that was definitely a sacrifice i really that was a hard change for me, like going from socializing with my friends every day to just being very isolated and focused on work. Um, and then, of course, like I haven't really had a normal teenage experience. Like I, um, every time my friends would want to hang out or something like that, I would always be busy. I'd always have like a script to learn or yeah. something to practice or maybe something to film. And I wasn't just I wasn't there. So, I mean, it's been really my life has just been really, really crazy and different but honestly i wouldn't i don't regret anything because i do love what i do at the end of the day and i wouldn't trade it for anything else so, so like being yeah. so, being so young in the in, in the industry like what's the best advice you've been given so far um i think don't get frustrated like a lot of people get frustrated I'm trying to think of advice that, you know, people have given me on set and everything. And I think it's always that because there are those ages where, I mean, even right now I'm kind of at an awkward age where they book older people to play my age and, you know, younger people to obviously play 11. I can't play 11 anymore. And so, you know, it's very easy, especially as an actor, you deal with a lot of rejection. And so a lot of people like end up, I guess, giving up or thinking that they can't do it. And really one of the things that has stuck is, you know, it's going to get frustrating, but, if you really truly love it then you never stop and do it for the right reasons and eventually like you'll I mean you'll book something that you love and um so I think I think that has definitely helped I'm sure there are tons of other advice that doesn't yeah. can't I can't think of right now that's just me yeah so you recently started on Fox's deputy uh, what drew you to this project that's so funny. I keep getting asked that question, and I think like really? people think that an actor's life is much more glamorous than it <laughs> actually is. Because when we're first starting out, or at least at my age, um, really what draws me to the project is the auditions. Like I just get something, and I'm like, okay, I, I, you know, yeah. audition, keep my fingers crossed. If I book it, that's awesome. That's amazing, and great for the resume and great for the experience. But if I don't, then I just like you know forget about it. So what drew me to, I mean technically what drew me to the project was definitely booking it and I was like very excited because it was a Fox show and I'd never done anything you know uh big I guess in my life before so um I mean that and as well as you know the cast um Yara Martinez I've always been a huge fan of her 
and Stephen, of course, as well, and just Bex and Shane, really just everyone. Um, and yeah, tell, that, I think tell, so. tell us about your tell us, tell us about your audition when you first went in there. Oh, my audition. Well, actually, I was in San Antonio at the time, so my audition was a taped audition, and it's actually a funny story. I got I got the audition, I looked at it, and I did not think I was going to book this, because they were looking, I think originally all of the characters were supposed to be a little bit older, even um, uh, Bill and Stephen and Yada, and so they were casting Maggie to be, I think, a 17-year-old, and the audition said it would be preferably... Um, better for us to have 18 and older or legally 18. And at the time I was 14. So I was like, I'm not going to book this. You know what I mean? But yeah. then again, it was an audition with my agents. And I was of course going to record it. I'm never not going to record an audition. And my mom was also like, you never know. So I guess he was right. Cause I recorded it. Um, didn't really care much about it. Like I, I again, did not think I was going to book it. So I told my brother to read with me last minute. And I told my oldest brother who my oldest brother is, is such a nerd. He's into all the science stuff. He wants to be a doctor and he cannot for the life of him, like um, be an actor or just show and express any bit of emotion. So recording the audition with him was very frustrating. And the sides that I got where Maggie was being very like sarcastic and frustrated because it's that first scene where like Bill doesn't want her to go to school wearing short shorts. So I guess that kind of showed that I was like frustrated with my brother and I don't know. I think they think it worked because it booked me the job. So right. at the end of the day, everything happens for yeah. So you play Maggie. Like, how would you describe her? Oh my goodness! I think she's she's uh, definitely very sweet. She's sarcastic towards her parents. I think Maggie, to be honest, is just the representation that you know Bill has a family at home that's waiting for him to come home safely every night, um, and so that that's kind of every time Maggie has a problem with her dad or with her family and she's like dealing with that through the episode at the very end, we all resolve it because then again, like she has just the love for her family that has, they both have very high risk jobs. And so she can't like risk not being okay with them. Mm. So I think she's very understanding. She's like forced to be very mature for her age and um, at the same time, you do see her in some episodes being a little, a, you know, a teenager. But, um, yeah. yeah, I do I do think she's very, yeah, just ahead of her time. If uh, if Maggie was a real person, would you be friends with her? Oh, yeah, I definitely think I, I, I would, yeah. for sure. Uh, what, do you, what do you think was the biggest challenge for you to portray this character? Um, finding the justification for her being so understanding in every episode. Cause me as a teenager, I'm not as like, if I get mad with my parents or something, we'll argue it out. And like, I don't think we'll ever <laughs> like, we'll just, you know, as a normal teenager would, we just don't understand each other sometimes. But Maggie always like every time that she has a problem with like Bill or with, um, or with Paula, like with her parents, she always resolves it and they always just end up having like a good family talk. And then for some reason they end up hugging like at the end every time. And it's always like just amazing to read that and think, wow, like this is, she's actually so mature for being a 14 year old who could just scream at her parents and yell no. And, and you know, they could be over like that, but no, she listens and like, she just finds um, a, a little, she just always understands, I guess she's very understanding. And so that was very challenging for me mm -hmm. getting to, find the justification of that so this was like your first big role on a series like how would you describe that feeling oh my goodness well it was definitely nerve-wracking at first yeah i thought it was kind of yeah i thought the set was going to be um like very glamorous or something like i wasn't sure if everybody was going to be super nice um i never worked with i guess quote-unquote celebrities before so it was definitely nerve-wracking but once I got there, it was just so normal, and, like, everybody was just so sweet and so helpful, and, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all there just to do our job, and so that just shocked me how, like, okay, this is amazing, because even though we're filming a TV show that everybody's going to see, it's very, like, personal when you're shooting it, because you just, like, grow connections to everyone, 
And so that, that was definitely surprising, but I was very nervous at first for sure. Mm. What would you say was your favorite scene playing Maggie? My favorite scene? Um, I think episode, let's see, is it episode 12 when I'm in the car with, uh, with Yara, with my mom, and we're having a conversation about Bill's job and how it's been kind of tough on the family. And then I think I say, what did I say again? It's just so funny because all of my friends always remember my lines and like they'll quote <laughs> me to make fun of me. Like it's very funny and I never remember what I would say. But um, I think I said something about uh, having to share like L.A. County. Uh, no, having to share my, my dad with L.A. County because that's just how it is. And that was just a very fun scene to shoot because we shot it in the car and it was it's so personal when you're shooting a scene and like none of the crew is there. And so it's just they put when you're uh, filming a, a car scene, they put cameras inside the car and then they get in another car and they just leave you to, to just do the scene by yourself. And it just felt so real. Like it just, I was completely in character. There was nobody else there. Like I, it was just really surreal. And um, so that was definitely, I think my favorite scene to shoot, but to watch, there's this other scene that's really funny where um, Yara improvised this thing that my mom told her to do because well she didn't tell her to do but my mom always does this thing where she um like tells me to lift my chin if we're taking a picture or something and that's just like a very mom thing to do in my family and uh she yada like did the same thing whenever we're taking our quinceanera pictures in the last episode and that just like cracked me up <laughs> <laughs> so so you know you've been you're still pretty new in this in this in the industry and stuff like that like so what do you enjoy more because you mentioned earlier you did a self-tape for this do you like auditioning in front of people or would you rather do self-tape oh my goodness uh that's so hard no actually i do i'd rather do self-tapes at the end of the day because it depends like when you go in for the first audition it's always just like a casting director taping you and you usually get like two tries so you have to make sure that one of those are good and you kind of think afterwards, like, wow, I could have done this at home and I could have, like, picked what tape works and, you know, done more than just two tapes. Yeah. So I think I definitely enjoy, like, taping it myself and, and getting to rewatch the tape and, like, correct myself and then doing it until I'm good with sending it. But once you get far, uh, further into the audition process and you start meeting, like, the producers or having, like, a screen test, I think that's very fun as well. So definitely, um, I mean, just both. Uh, just It depends on the circumstances of the audition. Mm -hmm. So who are, like, some of your influences in the acting world? Is there anybody that you look up to? Oh, so many people. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I – let's see – I grew up watching, I have two older brothers, so I grew up watching, like, Good Will Hunting and um, Forrest Gump. So, of course, like, Tom Hanks and um, Matt Damon, Leonardo DiCaprio, Ben Affleck, uh, Natalie Portman. I'm, like, I was a huge Star Wars fan growing up, and then I got into her actual movies that are just amazing. I love her. Uh, Meryl Streep, of course. And then there's so many, like, Broadway people that I, because, again, I had the very um, long Broadway stage, so... Um, Christy Altomar, I could really just name names yeah. all day, but there's, and of course the people that I've worked with as well are so inspirational. Like everybody on the cast of Deputy was just, I learned so much from them. And then I also worked with Caitlin Stacy, and she's just amazing. Um, that was two years ago, but her as well. Yeah. Just a lot of people. It's, it's, it's really nice having so many people to look up to. I just, I think our acting industry is amazing right now. Mm -hmm. What, what do you tell to, like, young people, like, your age that come up to you and they start talking to you about how they want to get into the industry and to the acting world? Like, what do you tell them, like, how to pursue it? Yeah. Um, well, of course, I give them a little a little bit of the technical side of it. And, you know, I bring my mom into the conversation because she really is the reason for a lot of the stuff that I've, that I've done. And my parents have supported me through this. So you definitely have to have that if you want to start young. But... I would just definitely, I love to stress the fact that, you know, it's anything is possible and there's going to be people, especially in a small town like San Antonio or just any place that's not really LA or anything. Um, there's going to be those people who are just are telling you that it's not going to work out and that it's too big of a dream. And you just got to like ignore the degradation of the people that say that you can't. So I definitely always encourage them to fight that. Just 
for some reason, every little girl that's come up to me that wants to do something in the industry or just wants to pursue anything creative, yeah. they always are like the same persona that they say, I don't like, I get bullied at school or I don't really have any friends. And it's just so weird to me how like, I guess creative kids or I, I don't know what it is, but it's always them saying that but, like, they say, I can't do it, but you know, so I always tell them that anything is possible. Like you just have to fight that. And if you set your mind to it and if you really work hard and um, stay dedicated, then, you know, I think anything is really possible. You can accomplish a lot of stuff, mm. even coming from a small town. So definitely just little words of inspiration and hopefully I can help. Do, do you have a, so like, where do you see yourself 10, 20 years from now? And, and do you have a dream role that you want to play someday? Yeah. Oh my goodness. In 10, 20 years, in 10, 20 years, I'd hope to maybe I do. I do still want to stick with the Broadway dream. Like I do whenever, after I turn 18, I want to go out to New York for maybe like a year or two and just take like intensive classes and maybe audition for Broadway. So um, just having more theater experience would be really, really great as well as um, I kind of want to do something with music as well. So having like an EP out and of course, as far as dream roles go, I do have like my dream roles that I would love to play. And I don't know, honestly, I just don't know where the acting side is going to take me because it's really, for right now, the age that I'm in, it's really about whatever you book, like do it because it's exposure and it's experience. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully just keep booking stuff and keep working. And I mean, as long as that happens, I'm a really happy person working and doing what I love. But, um, I would say maybe like a comedy, maybe doing a comedy would be really, really fun. TV or movie or both? Mm, I definitely want to do a movie. Like I want to go more the movie route, but as far as comedy goes, I don't know why, but I think being on a sitcom would be just like the most fun thing to do. Cause um, I, I just grew up watching sitcoms as well. And it's very much like theater I've heard. So I, I feel like that experience would be really, really fun. But then again, I don't know. Yeah. So when you're not working and you're not doing schoolwork and stuff like that, what do you enjoy doing in your downtime? <laughs> um, I'm quite a boring person. Like I usually am always, I guess, I'm, I don't know if I'm an introvert or something, but I, I do enjoy going out. I do enjoy seeing my friends as much as I can because, of course, I don't get the chance to do that often. So, like, taking that time to have fun with my friends, I very much enjoy. But when I'm just here home alone and, and I have any free time, I love binging TV shows. I love watching movies. I love playing piano, playing guitar, um, I'm singing. Um, yeah, I think, I think, just, I think I'm going to say watching Netflix is probably – <laughs> the way to, <laughs> to go with your board. <laughs> and, right, and right now, you have no other choice. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of everything that I'm currently doing right. on the daily. It's like, oh, is this, am I even going to do this anymore after this all ends? Or right. am I going to find something else? Uh, yeah. Lastly, how can the listeners find you on uh, social media? Um, I'm on Instagram. My Instagram is Valeria, V-A-L-E-R-I-A underscore Howdy, J-A-U-R-E-G-U-I. I apologize. That is so hard. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Valeria, thank you for coming on. This was fun. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. That's a wrap. That's a wrap, everybody. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening to the Man Cave Chronicles podcast. I finally get my man cave. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the MCC Podcast. And our website, themccpodcast.com. Until next time. Until next time.